Today we have a special guest from Belgium that he's here to tell us about aerospace engineering. Hello Adam, welcome. Hello, hola. <laughs> it's very nice to have you here. Thank you for giving time for this. Thanks to you, Melanie. So to start, uh, I want to ask you if you can tell us a bit about your background, like how did you decide to study this very cool subject? Um, I don't know, tell us a bit about your story. Uh, yes, so then I have to go back to my childhood. When we are a child, we have uh, different dreams. Usually we choose the, the, um, the task, the, the job, the dream job that people talk around us. So if there is a famous footballer uh, that is mentioned every day in your neighborhood, like Maradona, it was the case, then you say, I would like to be a footballer. Mm -hmm. Or if you watched a movie where they, they tell about the story of a policeman, and uh, who is like a hero in the movie, then you say, I, I want to be a policeman. So I had uh, different opinions in my childhood, but one day in primary school, our teacher made a test and she used different pieces of papers with different colors and she wrote questions on them. And the questions were like, do you like um, reading novels, for example? And topics that were similar had the same color. So this is how I realized that actually I like science. And then I started to read uh, books about science at my level, of course, at that time. And uh, it was more about the nature of things, like why is um, hot air lighter than cold air? Why does it go up? You know, then I started to have interest in that. And at the end, I came with the, the job of astronaut so this was my dream job because, again, it was something that seemed to be very challenging. Like everyone sees the astronauts, oh wow, those are really amazing people. And then I decided to do uh, aerospace engineering. I, 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 you can be an astronaut doing that? You can be an astronaut doing aerospace engineering. You can be an astronaut doing also different, um, by having different backgrounds. However, you really need to show that you are someone different. So maybe you have to know many languages, you have to be skilled, you have to have a very good health, like athletic. Uh, first of all, you should not have any uh, eye problem. And uh, at the end, it's a very competitive um, job because maybe 10,000 people apply for this and only a few of them are selected, like five or so. And it's not even every year, it's like every three, four years or five years, depending on the, on the country. So when you started studying, you wanted to be an astronaut. But then you continued with that idea or you changed and you say, for example, you, you preferred more like the engineering part of like, you know, working on rockets. Well, I always wanted to be an astronaut until a certain point where you face the truth. You need to have a very good uh, sight and I have to wear glasses. So this is a very negative point, first of all. And on the other side, since I know that it is very competitive, uh, I had to demonstrate that I am particular. And uh, maybe they are different because they do a different kind of sports, you know, like the dangerous ones. I only play football. <laughs> you need to have different skills. And those people who are selected are very skilled people. So what I realized is that I am maybe better in things that are not related to astronauts. Then I, accept, I accepted the situation and I said, okay, I prefer to uh, learn how to do mission planning, you know, which is also a very passionate job, like sending a probe onto another planet, do all these calculations. At the end, what an astronaut does is the man who is going to space and doing Okay, it's not an easy job. You have to be, you have to be psychologically very strong. This is also very important, and probably it was something that was lacking in me. So it's not because you really like the the job that you're, you are the one that fits the job. And probably it was my case. It was not fitting the job. Then I decided to go to follow a different path, and I am happy with that. That's great. Yeah. Actually, mission planning sounds amazing. It 
requires a very good knowledge of the physics of the, the planets because you need to know how to um, design a rocket and you need to know what kind of dangers can happen during the, uh, the traveling of the rocket and the rendezvous problem is also very complicated. When you uh, plan a mission, you need to arrive somewhere at the right time. So if you want to land on the moon, the, the moon has to be there while you are also there. If you make a mistake in your calculations, you will be there either before the moon or after the moon. And then you will not be able to land. It's a huge responsibility. And uh, this part of, um, of, of, of the aerospace engineering I like the most. And once you discovered your passion, where did you study? Like in which university? So I was born in Belgium and I studied in Belgium. And actually when I had already in mind that I wanted to do a career in aerospace, um, I still didn't know which branch at the university would fit this best. I had a passion for physics. Maybe I thought that physics would be the best. And actually, after talking with a secondary school teacher, he advised me to go to engineering studies. And this is how I decided to go for engineering in physics. And engineering studies had an entrance exam in mathematics. I passed this exam and all the students who passed the exam get, got enrolled um, at the University of uh, Liège for the, for the engineering studies. So I did my studies at the University of Liège, which is a very nice city, very famous for its uh, chocolate waffles, <laughs> by the way. Even if they don't want to have any career in aerospace, they can go there to taste the, the waffles. After the third year, we had to decide in which subsection of engineering physics we wanted to go. And one of them was uh, space techniques, which was the closest one to aerospace. There was another option, another subsection in electromechanic engineering, which was also close to aerospace. However, it was more about building rockets, like rocket engines and so on. And later on, they decided to merge these two sections and make one called engineer, uh, aerospace engineering. So I don't know what is the status today, but probably aerospace engineering section is still going on today. And then what happened? I wanted to ask you, like, did you got a job in some space agency? Like what happened afterwards? Of course, I wanted to go to the uh, Euro European Aerospace uh, Agency, but since it was very competitive, I could not get it. Then I uh, continued, so I found a work in a, a lab at the university where I studied, in the lab of a professor that I know where I did my master's thesis, and it was in astronomy. And after some time, I realized that astronomy was actually too theoretical for me, and I decided to go for something more engineering. And then I got a position in Germany, in Göttingen, at the German Aerospace Center. So that's how I moved to uh, a more uh, aerospace engineering field, I would say. I worked in uh, the airflow system in an airplane. We had to use um, lasers to determine uh, the velocity of air, how the air flows in, in the airplane cabin and from there uh, try to design this airflow system in a better way so that it's not too cold or too hot for the passengers. Then, uh, so during my uh, work, uh, my work at the University of uh, Liège in the field of astronomy, um, all our findings were going toward like was, was there life on other planets? So we always try to make a, con a conclusion about that. So I studied atmosphere dynamics and depending on the composition of the atmosphere, we could uh, maybe um, f claim whether in the past there could have been enough oxygen or enough water in the atmosphere so that life could happen. Or if not, why not, why it could not happen and so on. Then I decided to uh, find the answer to the question whether water is really necessary to have life on other planets and I switched to biology. <laughs> wow, from aerospace engineering to biology, that's 
quite a huge change. Well, I was always fascinated by the cells, like all the all the uh, phenomena that occur in cells, like DNA, like genetics. Uh, they were talking about cloning, and it was very impressive. How can you clone something, right? I decided to stop my career in um, aerospace engineering and decided to to do uh, studies in molecular biology. I did a bachelor in uh, molecular medicine. I very soon uh, realized that actually I could use my knowledge from my old field in the field of biology. And this is what I am doing right now. So since I know how a laser, how microscopes work, so together with the knowledge that I acquired in biology, I am right now working on developing a microscope system that helps understanding the genetics at the single cell level. Yeah, it's actually very good to merge these two worlds because you have a lot of knowledge on all these methodologies and mechanisms that really, I mean, biology is not only like the processes that happen on the living beings, but also all these techniques and methods that go with it. So I think there's a lot of room for these two groups of people to work together, you know. Coming back to the aerospace engineering career itself, I wanted to ask you if you could say some words on what's the value on the field itself, like what's your opinion on why is it important to invest and develop this in this kind of area? So in our everyday life, we actually come across all these little inventions that are developed by aerospace engineers even if we don't know. So this is very important. First of all, when you travel, you have a navigation system in the cars, which are only possible if you have satellites in space. One part of the job of an aerospace engineer is to uh, design those satellites and also plan the mission to send those satellites into space. Television is another one. So if you can watch uh, Uruguayan TV and if the people can see us, it's also thanks to that. So beyond what you like and what you did, can you give some other examples of things that people can specialize in or study when you, they do aerospace engineering? We can go to learn how to build rockets, how to build rocket engines, how to build a satellite, how to send a satellite into space, how to plan a mission to another planet, or even you can just uh, uh, go for theoretical works like astrophysics, for example. So you, all the doors are open in the fields of um, astrophysics to aerospace engineers. I also wanted to ask you if you have anything else to add that we didn't discuss before, or for example, special tips for whoever is thinking of a career in space. I think everyone is in touch with uh, news from space. This we cannot avoid. When there's a new discovery, a black hole, everyone hears about it. So we are all curious, curious to know about what's happening in space. But for those people who really want to have a career in space, what you need to do, what I would advise you to do is to learn English, Russian, these two languages, and also to try to have a training in uh, in uh, different aerospace uh, centers. So during the student uh, period, this is very important because this helps a lot for the future career. Those are very good tips actually, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Those were all the questions I had to, for you today to ask you. So thank you very much, Alain, for your time, to being here, telling your story, very interesting for me and everyone who is mm -hmm. watching. I thank you, Melanie, for having me here. And I am glad to have shared my experience with all the people. And I hope that it will be useful to uh, everyone who has interest in aerospace engineering. I would like to say bye-bye to everyone who is listening to us and also to my Belgian friends. Hasta la vista. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> well, thank you for your attention. I hope you have a nice day and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.